Oh, how much rain did we get? Um, gonna say at best an eighth of an inch. So that's not gonna do too much for us. It'll do something, but not too much. Hello and welcome to Twin Creeks Farms. Uh, today we are cleaning up this area of the barnyard. We're gonna try and assemble a bit of a crowding pen where we can bring the cows in and sort them and if they need to be medicated do that. If a cow is going to get shipped it'll make it easier to handle them there uh, with all their vaccines. Um, so there's that and then also if we have a cow that's had a calf sometimes there's just issues either with the calf coming out where they need assistance or in terms of getting that first latch the calf to suck on the teats to get its first colostrum. Once it's started on that, it's really good to go, but sometimes at first they can be pretty slow to it and they really need to get that in the first sort of six hours they're first feeding. Um, so if we can get this set up properly, then it will really help uh, with that. We had a couple instances this spring where we were trying to handle them without this setup and it was really it was stressful for the cattle and uh, also for us. Um, so we want to have this in place just to make everything easier for us and the cattle. The first thing that we're going to do is clean it up. It's, it's a mess right now. It's kind of the remnants of my first attempt at a little bit of a corral for calves last fall just to get them through the chute and that didn't didn't last very long um, so we're gonna build something a fair bit sturdier here uh, so we get this cleaned up to make space for it um, there we have sort of panels that were concrete forms that we've pulled out now um, so they should be nice and tall and fairly durable for what we're gonna do for now until we can afford to upgrade so we're just going to kind of spend as little money as possible on this for now. Um, and then we picked up a head gate uh, last fall that will be a good area to process them. So we'll have kind of a crowding area that they all get stored in while they're waiting to go through the head gate. And then the head gate on the end of it. Uh, so you'll see a little better what we're doing when we get going at it.
They were scraped down fairly well. There's an old concrete slab underneath. It's, almost, like, it's fairly cracked. And last summer we cut out a bunch of small trees growing in here. So those stumps are still sticking through. So we kind of had to work our way around those. It's what we've got to work with for now. So we'll get started with that. We've got the 2x4 framed panels with plywood on the one side. They're not all exactly the same height just because they were forms for another project where the base wasn't the same height. So we'll make it work. Um, hopefully if there's any angles we'll get it on the top so that it's not throwing everything off. But we'll start with the panels on the one side and then brace it to the fence with 2x4s. And I expect what we're going to have to do is run a support across the top with some angle bracing to build out our other side. Um, and we'll try to start wide on the one end and as we get towards the head gate's going to go down towards the corner there. Uh, then we'll try to narrow it to get them uh, narrowed towards the width of the head gate, the, sh the shoot on the head gate. Uh, I'm thinking we might try to put just a small um, gated section right in behind it that's a little easier to access uh, if we're trying to get in behind the cow. Um, one thing we'll have to make sure is it's quite narrow as well because if they have space to kind of turn then they can they can jump a f over a I don't know a four and a half maybe even a five foot well actually they can jump higher than that, over something higher than that not clear but they can get their front over and then their back over I know at the sail barn and it would have to be it'd have to be six feet tall the uh they've had them in the past a, little, a real crazy cow go over the top so so i say if we have it nice and narrow then uh it makes it harder for them to get turned and get over that so we'll try to do something like that maybe a small gate or or i'm not sure if we got some uh pallets like skids that we can make something out of or maybe we'll just have to fabricate something just something that we can get in and out from in behind them if we need to especially if we're having someone in to do uh, AI or embryo implants or putting cedars in it's just important to be able to get behind them fairly easily and I haven't really figured out yet either too but then we'll need kind of a spot in behind that to stop the cows from coming ahead with you in there so there's still a few things to be worked out. I might end up doing is uh, I expect 
once we get a number of these across, we'll be catching a fair bit of wind. Um, so I expect we're going to have to take a hole saw and drill some holes in there just to make it so the wind can actually flow through it a little bit. Um, part of what I'm hoping happens with this idea is that because it's so tall, once the cows are in it, they can't really see uh, outside of it, so they're not going to have the same incentive to try and, and get through somewhere. So like with a four and a half, five foot tall gate, they can see what's on the other side of that and so they'll try to, like I say, they might try to jump over and get there. Whereas this is, I don't know, six and a half feet tall. So there's no way they can see anything. So once they're in there um, and the cows are kind of behind them to, to keep them moving forward, then the only kind of light they see or sort of direction they see to go is the head gate and so just to try to use the kind of the psychology of the cow to, to get them going down to the end uh, again just to make it easier for them and for us and to just prevent injuries and just to make everything it won't be relaxed but to go a little smoother so I think that's about where we want to be in terms of length that way uh, we can still get our um, head gate with the chute uh, at the end of that and still be on the concrete um, and so on that side it'll all be fixed panel and then just just the one section before the head gate on this side will make some sort of gate I think that's what we're gonna do and then we'll be about uh, maybe 12 feet wide on this side narrowing down pretty well to the width of the head gate on the other end. Like I say, just kind of funneling them towards the chute. This is our head gate with the chute on the back of it. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It was something fairly cheap that we picked up in the fall. Um, it's really what we could afford just so that uh, we would be able to handle cattle a little easier. Um, if you're not familiar with kind of the size of cows, um, like when they're born they can be as light as maybe 70 pounds, if they're premature maybe a little lighter, but at, at maturity um, some, can, some cows can be over 2,000 pounds and you know it's not that uncommon for a bull to be 2,500 pounds or more, so you really need something to contain them because every now and then uh, they're going to need vaccines, medicine, whatever to keep them healthy and just to manage them well. Uh, we have to give them sometimes stuff to manage just flies and worms and uh, just sort of any general health stuff. So you really have to have something to be able to hold them because you know, it's not like you or I where we can kind of sit there and even though we don't like a needle, we'll take it, whereas they just, they don't necessarily understand what's happening. At some point I'm going to have to get this uh, welded back in place. When we were dealing with our one cow that the calf wouldn't latch and she wasn't very happy with us, so we had to get her in the head gate and... Uh, Somehow she managed to get it kind of tipped over and her leg through the uh, slats here and fell down so I had to cut it to get her her leg out so we could get her back up so I'll have to get that fixed at some point. Um, so part of it I think was that the head gate just wasn't attached to anything else um, so it could kind of rock and the other part is is when they bought when I bought it so the floor is rotted out of it so I'm going to have to put in a new floor in there and I think the combination of those two things will prevent us from having those issues in the future. Again, safety for us, safety for the cow. So the smoother it goes, the better it is. So there's this pulley on the back and we pull it and that back gate slides up and we'll push the cow through. We let that down so that they can't back out. Uh, and if we really need to push them forward, we can put kind of a board in behind here just to keep them right forward in the head gate. Um, 
And when they come through, their shoulders hit these bars and they should click forward like that. And that locks it in place. Um, so that keeps them snugly in there. And we can kind of adjust how wide that opening is. So if we're doing like a run of calves, then we can have that a fair bit narrower. Kind of the more contained you can keep them, the less they can kind of move around and, you know, risk of them hurting themselves or us. You were like, we'll be dealing with needles and everything like that. So if they're, if they're nice and contained, it just, it does make things go smoother. And then there's this nose catch that I got to straighten out. And again, that if it's in the right spot, that'll help contain their head too. So it's just, it keeps us from getting pricked with a needle, them getting pricked in the wrong place, us have to needle them more than once because the needle didn't go in the way it was supposed to. So this is, this for us, for a beef farm, will be one of our most important tools. This as far as we got today. We got uh, both sides up, the panels on, and the head gate kind of moved into place. With just kind of basic bracing, we're going to have to come along and add a lot of bracing to both sides um, just to give it strength along the run of it and also uh, partially just keep the wind and everything from blowing it over from the cows knocking it over. So it'll need a fair bit of bracing to hold it as is. And then with the one side running straight and this one running at an angle, it gave us maybe enough length that we can just get a little bit of a gate in there. Um, and I think with that access there, we maybe don't even need um, a second gate in there to, to give the operator space. I think once, I think we can clear the space from here. Um, so I think we'll be okay for that. Uh, I might find out that I don't like that. Uh, in which case we'll do something there. Um, yeah, still the bracing, got to get the floor in there and that welded. But uh, a good start to the crowding area slash corral. Um, hoping to have it working pretty well. Tuesday morning we're supposed to have a, supposed to ship out a cow. It's, it's a little crazy so it's got to go. Um, and it's a little crazy, which is why we need this system to work. If you like this content, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, we're still looking for suggestions for names for uh, that uh, Charlay calf. She's a heifer calf. Um, so if you've got any ideas on that, leave it in the comments below. And we'll keep you updated on what's going on with her. If you want to follow us for additional content, uh, you can find us on Instagram at Twin Creeks Farm 2020, and you can also find us on Twitter. Hey, baby. Do you like raspberries? You running away with your treasure? Is that a good one? <laughs> you eating straight from the dad's basket? Oh, don't squish the berries. Baby.